Be inspired on Liberty Radio. What do you mean I behave according to the way I see myself? You grow older, you go to school, uni, you get married, you are living your life and things come your way because you live on Earth, on planet Earth, you are still alive. So it's only natural that you feel things, that you see things. However, if we are not careful, what happens to us starts shaping who we are. How do you see yourself? When you see yourself clearly as you are, the Holy Spirit will be able to work in you and change you. The Godly Wood Self-Help, the first opportunity in 2024 for you, woman, to receive what you need. On Saturday, 2nd March at 3 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4, 3NX with live streaming to branches outside London. A very good evening to everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you for one more Be Inspired Live from our studio. This Saturday at three o'clock, as you saw there, we are going to have a special meeting for all the women of the UCKG. And in fact, those who are not of the UCKG as well, they are welcome to come because we believe that the Holy Spirit will bring a direction, a guidance for you, woman, who want to know what is the plan of God for your life, what is expected from you as a wife, a mother, as a woman in today's society, according to biblical standards, not what is expected of you as a woman, from people's perspective, because people's perspective change daily, yearly, but the image, the understanding of who the woman of God is according to the Word of God, that has been the same, has always been the same. Fashion changes, uh, technology changes, the world changes, but what God designed women to be or who God designed women to be, that remains the same. And we are in a society, we live in a society now where people have never been this uncertain of where they fit in society, at work, in the family. And we believe that God wants to bring this understanding, to make this very clear to you. This Saturday at 3 p.m. in the Godly Wood Self-Help Meeting, of course, for women only. All right? Well, I would like to share with you now the testimony of Goldlin. You're going to see how God takes someone who is broken and transforms that person from the inside out. The reality is that as you go through life, your financial standing can change. Your marital status can change. But that doesn't mean that you change as a person on the inside. However, when the change starts on the inside, automatically the outside will also change. And you're going to see here from this testimony how the transformation that starts within causes then things to change on the outside as well. Let's watch Goldlin's testimony. We'll come back in just a moment. In the past, I had a very good family at the, to begin with. But then all of a sudden, because of the violence in my house, my mom decided to leave my father. But she left me with my father. And that's the first moment I felt abandoned. I felt alone. As I carried on with life, I didn't realize how much this was affecting me. And when I got into this first relationship, I thought I found the person I was dreaming of. This is the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. I was at an age where I was thinking, yes, this is the time to settle down, I was 18 years old. But then I realized that he was cheating on me and I was like completely again abandoned by myself with someone that I thought would be with me forever. So my life was spiraling out of control. 
I did not know what to do. I got into a relationship with someone who was 10 years older than me and was offered a job to be an escort. I felt really low. I felt like I was nothing. And that's the point that got me to one day walking aimlessly on the streets in Leicester. And I walked to this bridge and I looked down and I stood there contemplating taking my life. I got this sense of just a little bit of hope from somewhere. I'm not sure what, what it was, but I remembered that I was invited by a family member to go to the Universal Church. But it's not something that I had not thought about. I'd rejected every time I was invited. I'd refused to go. But at this moment where I was in the worst of my worst, when I was in my moment of despair, God remembered me and reminded me of this um, invitation. The next day, I rang my family member and I said, we need to go to this place because I need help. From the moment I walked into the Universal Church, I received my first prayer and for the first time, I fell asleep without crying. I fell asleep without thinking about what was going on in my life. I felt like a heavy weight had been taken off my shoulder. God called me to this place for a reason and things started to change from that day. As I was going through my journey in the Universal Church, I started seeing changes in my life slowly, but there was something different about the assistants that were there. I would see that they were stronger. So I wondered what this was. And I asked and they said, it's the Holy Spirit that gives you this. And this was the beginning of me starting to seek the Holy Spirit. And as I learned the different things I needed to do to achieve and to receive the presence of God inside of me, I started doing those things. I started fasting, I started praying, I started seeking. And I remember one day while I was seeking, God remembered me again. He remembered that that emptiness was for him to fill. And he came inside of me and I was filled with so much joy, so much peace. And I can remember, I could see myself as a different person. Not the person that was at the bridge, not the person at the beginning when I came to the Universal Church, but someone completely different. I changed inside and that was what I was looking for. Being remembered by God gives me this um, different vision in my life, especially because I was a man or having multiple men. I have a completely different vision of men. I see what a man should be and what I should and how I should treat the person, how I should live for the person. I'm no longer seeking for that love for men, but I know that I am being prepared to be able to be a woman of God, to be able to help my, my, my husband. I am completely blessed in my financial life. Things have completely changed. I think the tables have been turned. That's what I could say. And I love my job. I love my students. I love what I do. But most of all, I love that I'm able to give as well. And this gives me the most joy, being able to give people what I have. Today, I have a wonderful relationship with my mother. We are best friends. We talk about everything. We share everything. My relationship with my father as well has completely changed. I know that what happened between them does not affect me today. Forgiven what happened and because God remembered me, he made me to be an assistant. He gave me the opportunity to be an assistant. I'm able to help people in the Universal Church. I'm able to assist those who are going through the same situation I went through. And this gives me the most joy. For me, being remembered by God is being happy, fulfilled, having hope, knowing that good things are coming for me as well having this joy inside of me that even though I know that sometimes things can happen, that I know that there's someone I can rely on. This is what being in my body by God is. Just having someone I can lean on whenever I'm down, whenever I'm low, because He is the one to lift me up. I don't know if you really paid attention to that testimony. I hope you did. And, you know, as she was talking about her story, you see how powerful our God is. And you understand from her testimony exactly, clearly, very clearly, what it means to be remembered by God and what it means to be, to feel forgotten. Because imagine, 
this young lady said that prior to coming to the church, she stood on a bridge contemplating jumping and something stopped her, a strength stopped her from doing that. But in that moment, there on that bridge, she probably felt completely and totally invisible. But coming to the church, that changed. She saw that God saw her in her point of suffering, saw her when she was struggling. This is the premise of the Remember Me event. In fact, we are going to make this testimony available on our YouTube page tonight, standalone, available there. And I would urge you to use this testimony to send to anybody that is in that situation. This person, <laughs> this young lady, even the man that she trusted, that she had a relationship with, he made her feel like the most invisible person on earth when it was suggested to her to be an escort. Can you imagine that? I can't even begin to imagine how hurtful that is. But it's these people, people that are forgotten about by everybody in this world. It's these people that God remembers. You who are an assistant, a member of the church, that testimony will be available for you to share on our uh, YouTube page. You can later use it to share to someone, with someone to evangelize, to start telling them about Easter Sunday, the day that many lives will be changed here at the Cathedral of Miracles in Finsbury Park and all over the UK. Let's watch now what's going to happen tomorrow at all our UCKGs here in the UK in this special Bible study we will have with the message of Bishop Macedo. The Word of God is an endless fountain. Whoever is interested in drinking of this water will discover that it contains everything that they need to live a happy and fulfilling life. It's like a compass that shows us the way and a weapon to protect ourselves. When we pray, we speak to God. But when we open the Bible, it's God who speaks to us. His thoughts bring about a change in our minds and helps us to see through the eyes of faith, countering fears and doubts. This Wednesday, we shall delve deeply into the study of this word to extract lessons that can make us strong and enable us to win our battles. The study of the Word of God with the Lord's Supper at 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4 3NX or at any universal church near you. What is the importance of the Wednesday service. Tomorrow, in all our services, we will have the Lord's Supper. That in itself is extremely special because we were commanded by the Lord Jesus to take part of the Lord's Supper in remembrance of His sacrifice. And if He commanded us to do that, when we don't do it, we have this opportunity, this privilege available to us and we don't do it, it's like we are diminishing the importance of this very special event. That's special in itself already for tomorrow. But every Wednesday we have a Bible study and actually over the past few weeks we've been speaking about the armor of God and tomorrow we'll be watching and listening to the second part of a message given by Bishop Macedo. In fact, this message was given by the Holy Spirit through Bishop Macedo in a pastor's meeting recently. You're going to have the privilege of watching this. But I want you to understand here, we're going to look at the Bible now, I want you to understand about the importance of God's Word in our life. Paul wrote to Timothy the following, he said, the following. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. So first thing here, how many people say, well, but who wrote the Bible? The Bible was written by men. 
Listen, every book in the world was written by men. God didn't take a pen, other than with the case of the Ten Commandments, God didn't take a pen and start writing what we know as the Bible. But God inspired through His Spirit men of God who wrote what we now have together in our hands as the Bible, the Word of God, the Law of God. And we can see that the Bible is not just any book, it's a book inspired by God. So the first thing that Paul said to Timothy here is that the Word of God is inspired by God. All Scripture. I, I know that there are people who say, I believe in the Bible, some parts of the Bible, but I don't believe in this part. They don't believe because it's not convenient for them. That's the reality. When you hear, say so, when you hear someone say, I believe in some things of the Bible and I don't believe in others, what that person is saying, if you translate this into reality, is that the person only believes in what is convenient for them. But then we have a problem because a lot of the Bible is inconvenient. We can even say most of it is inconvenient because it challenges us to change. You see, that's why he said here, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I believe everybody in this world wants to be complete. And that's why in this world there's such a thirst for knowledge. There's a thirst, you know, people sometimes are confused with religions and they try religion A or B or C and they get to a point where they get tired. Maybe you are tired of religions. Maybe in your home you have books of different religions and gurus and that hasn't changed your life. When the reality, the answer is right in your fingertips, literally. Because I'm, because I'm sure in your home you have a Bible there and the answers for you becoming a complete man. The Apostle Paul said here, that the Bible makes us become complete men and complete women. The answer to becoming this person is at your fingertips through the Word of God. Tomorrow, bring your Bible with you when you come to the service because as we will listen to this message by Bishop Macedo, inspired by the Holy Spirit, we'll be going through the Bible as well. And I'm sure that God is going to strengthen your faith and guide you. As the Bible says, if we go back to the beginning of that verse, the Word of God says the following, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, and for correction. In the Word of God we find correction for us to become this complete man, we find encouragement, we find everything that we need. I want to pray for you now. In fact, if you have a Bible with you there in your home, if you don't mind, go and grab that Bible there where you are now. Let's do that together. Grab your Bible with you, hold it there in your hands. We're going to pray together because I believe there, that word, that book, that holy book that you have in your hands, in fact, the only holy book that you have there in your hands, God will speak to you through it. Let's talk to God now. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord, thank you because this Word that is here in my hands, this Word that is inspired by God, that is inspired by you to correct, to strengthen, to guide. That's why the psalmist wrote that your Word is a light to our feet, a lamp to our path. And tomorrow, my Lord, we will gather before your presence to understand what is your will for our life. Because how many people say, I wish I knew what God wanted to do with my life. I wish I knew what my tomorrow is going to be like. 
and I may not know what tomorrow will be like, but I know from His Word that my life is in His hands. My God, I pray for this person right now that maybe doesn't know what to do. They feel hopeless. They feel without aim or guidance in their life. Perhaps facing right now the most troubling situation they've ever faced in their whole life. But when they go through this word that is now in their hands, tonight, tomorrow in the service, that you will speak to them, that you will guide them, be the light and be the lamp to their feet, to their path, to show them the way, strengthen the weak, my Lord. And may this word be what guides this person's path in everything they do in the name of the Lord Jesus. My Father, may tomorrow the Lord's Supper be a moment of reconciliation for those who are struggling, for those who are distant from you. May there be reconciliation in your house. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I believe that you are blessed and I want to end the service by saying that if you right now are struggling with something, struggling with the problem, you need to talk to someone. Maybe you need to receive a more specific prayer. You need someone to hear your problem. Get in touch with us. Don't wait until tomorrow. You can talk to a pastor this very moment, right now. If you call the number on your screen, 020 seven six eight six six thousand or send a whatsapp to o two o seven six eight six six thousand and ten there will be a pastor there ready to listen to you to pray for you and to encourage you in fact not just now but 24 hours a day all right may god bless you abundantly we'll see you tomorrow in the church i'll be here in the 10 a.m service and also 7 30 p.m and i'll be back here 10 p.m for be inspired live from our studio. God bless you. Bye-bye. This has been Be Inspired on Liberty Radio. If you'd like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details on screen. Through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website. Or you can gift aid your donation writing through the email address on screen. Thank you for your help. Want to know about our weekly schedule of services? Let's break it down into bite-sized pieces. Monday is devoted to all things financial, work, study, immigration. Come to receive clarity on how to achieve your goals. Do you have a pain or a long-term disease? Come to claim your healing in the Tuesday services. After all, by his stripes, we are healed. Midway through the week, things might start to get testy and we need a spiritual boost. Wednesday is the day for this. Drinking from the fountain of God's word is sure to keep you going. The second most important area of our lives is our love life. Join us at the Rainbow Theatre on Thursdays at 8 p.m. for your lessons in intelligent love. The battles of daily life can get tiring and overwhelming, but that's because they're not physical. This is why on Fridays we fight against spiritual forces because we have been given authority over them. Do you have an impossible case in your life? Fight it on Saturdays at 7 a.m. We also meet to evangelize at 10 a.m., so feel free to join us. The week begins and ends with the empowerment meetings on Sundays. There is no better way to develop the life that you want than to allow God to do His work in you. Believe me, I know. Pop in today to your nearest universal church.